اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ میں گوڈز پیس میسی اور بلیسنگ بھی اپن یو اور یو فیملیز میرے نام ہے عبداللہ سمیم خان میں ایم سی ایم سی ایم سی Before I begin, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of this land, our past, present, and future upon which we have gathered here. We thank you all for accepting our humble invitation. As part of, our, of any Islamic gathering, we always begin with the recitation from the Holy Quran. And for this, it gives me great pleasure to invite on the stage the respected Imam of Gold Coast, Mosque Imam Imran Hussain. He is the Secretary of Imam Council of Queensland and the Imam of Gold Coast Mosque. Imam Hussain. Just before I do the I'd like to do the translation of the verses which I'm going to recite from the Quran. The first uh, verse, which verse chapter of the Quran is known as Surah Al-Fatiha, the opening, and it goes, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, all praise is due to Allah, Lord of the worlds, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, the most compassionate, the most merciful, Maliki Yawmiddin, Master of the Day of Judgment, You alone do we worship and you alone do we ask for help. Guide us to the straight path, The path of those whom you have favored, Not the path of those who earned your anger and those who went astray. And then I'm going to recite uh, three verses from Surah Ibrahim, which is the chapter of Abraham. Almighty Allah says, وَأُدْخِلَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِيَ الْأَنْهَارِ We shall, shall be entered those who believe and practice righteous deeds. They shall enter into gardens beneath which rivers shall flow. Uh, into paradise, they will dwell in there forever. Tahiyyatuhum fiha salam, the greeting in there will be peace. Alam tara kayfa daraballahu mathalan kalimatan tayyibatan ka shajaratin tayyibah. And Allah sets forth a parable of a good word, good education, good institutions, similar to that of a good tree. Uh, its roots are well grounded and its branches are spreading high up, giving its fruit. It is giving forth its fruits and bearing the benefits to the community at every moment. And in this manner, Almighty Allah gives parables so that you may reflect and understand. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأدخل الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات جنات تجري تجري من تحت تها الأنهار خالدين فيها بإذن ربهم تحيتهم فيها سلام ألم تر كيف ضرب الله مثلا كلمة طيبة كشجرة طيبة كشجرة طيبة أصلها ثابت وفرعها في السماء تؤتي أكلها كل حين بإذن ربها ويضرب الله الأمثال للناس لعلهم يتذكرون صدق الله العظيم جزاك الله خير Imam Imran Hussain for your beautiful, wonderful recitation. Just uh, before I call upon the next uh, performers, uh, just a few housekeeping instructions. There are three emergency exits, one on my left, there's two on my right, uh, one on my right and one friend. And the men's facilities is from the middle door to the end and on the left, you'll find men's and ladies. Living in this country, we are proud to be Australian Muslims. And for this reason, I would like to take this opportunity to call upon our young madrasa students to render the national anthem. For this, I would like, I would humbly request everyone to stand up, please. <coughs> traditional elder for the area and she is from Ugera, Ugambe. Now I would like to call upon Auntie Robin. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 
Wubugu Budjara and Jingri in Yugambeh means good morning and hello. I'm very honoured to be standing up here today welcoming you all here to this beautiful um, mosque. It was such a, a lovely feeling when I walked in this morning and I saw the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander flag flying proudly above with the Australian flag. And <clears throat> it's just so good to be able to see that and, and to feel that the new people who are coming to Australia, that you are acknowledging the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, you know, who are the First Nations people of this country. And I sincerely say thank you from the bottom of my heart for that. And as we do see those flags flying proudly, let's hope that we do respect all those flags. And um, I do welcome you all, and especially all the special guests that are here this morning. Some of the gentlemen I see everywhere, and I'm sure they're sick of me as well. So, you know, it's nice to see everyone and the police um, officers here as, as well, because they do a great job in our community. And without our police, you know, who knows where we would be. And I say thank you to you as well. Um, <laughs> yes, I'm a proud Malanjali woman, Sri Lanka, on my father's side, and a Biri Gabba woman, Sri Lanka, on my mum's side. And what that means is, as a Malanjali woman, we're all part of the Yugambe language region, and that goes from Beenley in the north to Tweed in the south, out to Bay Desert, and parts of Stradbroke Island. So this mosque is actually sharing the land with the Yugambe and the Yagura people. I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge all elders of all cultures, both past, present and future, for without their knowledge, wisdom, guidance and support, we wouldn't be where we are today, and I sincerely give them thanks. And I know that the footprints that they've laid in the sand or the grass for us, we, you know, as their children are following in those footsteps, and hopefully we can make them proud of all the achievements that we are doing ourselves, and we can continue that through our children and our nieces and nephews. So hopefully we're doing the right thing by them. So I will finish off now by saying, Jingi Walu Walu Jimbi, welcome to Yukon Bay Country. And once again, thank you for giving me the opportunity for welcoming you all here to this beautiful place that we call home. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much, Auntie Robin, for your kind words. Next on my list is our elderly, Dr. Hussein Akram. He's the chairman of Slack Street Mosque and state president for Islamic practice and Dawa Circle. Now I'd like to call upon Dr. Hussein Akram. He's also a practicing GP. Auzubillahi <laughs> minash shaitanur razim bismillahi rahman rahim Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi barakatuhu and good morning to all our brothers and sisters. I acknowledge the rights of our Aboriginal people, the traditional owner of the land, the past and the future, the land which we are standing now. I pay tributes to our soldiers and our police forces who sacrificed their life for the safeguard of our freedom and democracy. And then I like to share with you the historic moment that we are having here today, the opening, official opening of the Slacks Creek Moors, the Australian Unity Center. For us, it was a one year journey and I like to mention three of our brothers and our soldiers. One is Imam Akram, Ustad Shamim, who is the MC of today, and Hassin Goss. They were considered to be a three musketeers or trios going around whole Australia and New Zealand to collect the money for us. I joined them few occasions, but I couldn't travel like them. But they are the main hero where you're sitting, make it possible to uh, have this Australian Unity Center and the dream came true. Actually, it didn't came true only, it's a foundation for the future. I think this place will serve the nation until the end of the earth and we have a lot of things in plan and they will be able to make it possible. And we have big donors coming from the community like Yusuf Mir, Farooq Adam and 
name, a lo lot of nameless people, and a lot of people donated and didn't want us to mention their name here. So I pay tribute to them, I to pay salute to them and thanks, and Allah will give them barakah and lots of rizik. Now, I am an Australian GP. I like to highlight some current situation what's happening in Australia. Like as a GP, what we do? We, do, we, we save lives. That's one, one thing I like to make clear. Like our health minister is here. If I'm saying wrong, he can object me. Like if in a room we are 100 doctors, there will be 10 to 12 Muslim doctors in that. Am I right? Health Minister, so what do you think? We are only one person of the population, but we are 10 to 12 percent of the doctors. That means every day we are saving lives more than any other ethnic group does. So we are the life saver, we are not the killer. That's what I am willing to tell you. What happened in Parramatta and Lynn Cafe? Who is responsible for it? Yes, everybody is responsible as Australian. And I am responsible for it too because I haven't done my homework. Now, the man who was supposed to be in jail, he was, he was, went free and did the incidents of Lean Cafe. So everybody, all, we are responsible for it. And then the boy, 15 year boy, can acquire a gun. This is shame for the whole nation. It's not only the problem of the Muslims. Now, the question is, what we can do? We can unite the nation. Only solution is, like some people with this instance trying to divide. Some of our brothers got it wrong. They're trying to divide the nation. But I am telling you, surely, from my heart, that this is not the solution by dividing. Like, singling out the Muslims is not the solution. It has to be a united effort. So under the roof of Australian Unity Center, I like to mention that unity is the only thing that can save my country. Like I came to Australia as an immigrant. That means, what does it mean? It means that I choose to be Australian. So I have to love my country. I have to love my country. If I don't love my country, I don't have any right to stay here. And that applies for everybody. So if you don't have any love for Australia, you can go anywhere you want. F, I, the media is trying to tell that Musti, Mufti did not tell this, but on behalf of the Mufti and the whole Muslim community, I'll tell, declare that if you love Australia, stay here. If you don't love Australia, leave Australia. And you don't have right to stay here. And this is my declaration as a Muslim and a part of the representative of the Muslim community. Let's wake up. Protect our children. Like we teach them pork is haram. We teach them alcohol is haram. Why can't we teach killing is haram? Killing is not jihad. Killing is a haram because you don't, Allah doesn't give you permission to kill someone you even don't know. So where it comes from? Haram, you cannot do haram things. You cannot, if you cannot eat haram, if you cannot drink haram, you cannot do haram act. So forget about it. Now, in Australia Unity Center here, and there will be a lot of facilities in Australia working for the children, working for the youth. So we have to protect our youth we have to protect our families, we have to protect our society, and we have to finally protect our country. Now, only main key will be the unity. If you can unite the nation, if you can unite the hearts, if we can unite the children, and unite everybody, the time will come when we are more safe. And that is the key to safety. Safety of our freedom, safety of our democracy. God bless Australia, God bless our children, our nation, and a wonderful nation of us, the wonderful country of us, and inshallah, Allah will protect it. Asalaamu Alaikum. Jazakallah Khair, Dr. Hussain Akram, for your wonderful message.
Thank you very much. Now, next on my list is a very important person whom I have been for last 11 months. I have been very close to him. We have traveled all around it, Dr. Hassed, and we shared uh, apartments, but not the bed. <laughs> Sorry. We slept in the same room. You know, we had, at times we played some games, we recorded each other some snoring, and we, this is how we passed our time for the last 11 months. We left our family, hardly we seen any weekend, we stayed home. So, he is none other than Imam Akram Bucks. He is born in Western Australia. He studied to become an Islamic scholar in South Africa for 12 years. He was an Imam at Karabi Mosque for seven years. One of the founding members of the Australian Unity Centre, Slacks Creek Masjid. He is the Vice President of Council of Imams, Queensland. Currently, one of the directors and the Imam of Slex Creek Mosque. Now, I would like to call upon Imam Akram Baksh. Thank you, Sir Shamim. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. Distinguished guests, respected elders, brothers, sisters, I greet you again in accordance with the teachings of my faith by saying Assalamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh that may the peace and blessings of Allah the Almighty be upon you and your families. Before I begin, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land upon which we have gathered today. And I would also like to acknowledge the respected Auntie Robin, Honorable Cameron Dick, Honorable Jim Chalmers, Deputy Mayor Russell Lutton, David Ford, Dr. Mustafa Ali from the Crescents of Brisbane, <coughs> uh, Mr. Wayne Briscoe, Haji Hassan Goss, the MP Peter Russo, respected Imams, committee members of various mosques, Haji, dear friend Bashar Jamal of Human Appeal, Noble Mission who has come all the way, Noble Mission Australia who has come all the way from Sydney, Haji Sams Rain, the Dean family, Haji Sultan Dean, Pastor David Williams, and Assistant Commissioner. Today at this momentous event, as an Australian born Muslim, I would like to take a moment to reflect upon how fortunate we are as Muslims in Australia. Yes, there are some challenges we face, and those challenges are serious. But if we, all, if we put it all in context, by and large, we have many things to be grateful for. The fact that we can freely practice our religion in this country is indeed a right. But it is also a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are working with many organizations, both Muslim and non-Muslim, to improve our relationship with the wider Australian community. Our relationship with the government representatives is now such that we can have, we can give each other constructive feedback when we disagree on matters. We can freely raise our concerns and work together to find a solution. The fact that we can have this sort of relationship, despite all the troubles of the world, is indeed something that we must be grateful for. Dear respected noble audience, the Muslim community in Australia is extremely active. According to the research done by Dr. Nora Amath, we have over 486 community-based organizations in Australia with, which support both Muslim and non-Muslims. This message tends to get lost in the public discussions, but it is a very important one. As we continue to work with the wider community, we hope and pray that the negative perceptions of Muslims and the current that currently exist will be replaced with a message of friendship and positivity. 
I would like to end off with some comments on the Slacks Creek Mosque itself. We call it the Australian Unity Centre. Our vision for this mosque is to play an important role in our local community and to be a beacon of understanding for both Muslim and non-Muslims. We want to portray a message of collaboration and display the tangible value display the tangible value that mosques play in their local communities in partnership with other mosques and other organizations such as the Islamic Council of Queensland and the Council of Imams Queensland we aim to develop leaders in our community who understand the Australian context and to ensure that we all have a bright and harmonious future. Finally, as many of you know, this establishment of this mosque was genuinely a community-based initiative. And we signed the contract to purchase the property and we have 12 months to raise the necessary funds. The support that we received from everyone here in Queensland and right across the country was simply unbelievable. The generosity and kindness was truly touched by our hearts and we cannot thank you enough for your support and we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah azza wa jal the almighty rewards you all abundantly for your generosity and kindness dear respected brothers and elders my noble audience I would like to take this opportunity to say thank you to say thank you to a group of very important people who are very close to my heart and that is my volunteers volunteers <laughs> the uncle that took me every weekend myself and Ustad Shamim to the airport early in the morning every person that has contributed towards this project every person that cut, cut vegetables the food group the Friday fruit, the man who built this beautiful mihrab, our brother Suhail, let us give him a, a hand of applause. Please stand up, brother Suhail. This is our man. Words cannot express how grateful I am and we are for your help and support, as this is part of our deen, our religion. As the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, those who are not thankful to people are not thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So please forgive me, I would like to really express my gratitude, my most sincere gratitude to all the volunteers, those who have sold tickets towards the fundraiser, those who contributed in any way. Please, if I have not acknowledged you, forgive me. But today is the day of acknowledgement. Today is the day we express our gratitude for all the support that we have received. Jazakallah khairan. We are thrilled to have us, have you join us today. And we hope you enjoy not just the lunch, but our company. Thank you once again. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Jazakallah khair, Imam Akram Baksh, for your wonderful message. Now, I would like to call upon... I would say our Imam Yusuf Peer. Yus Imam Yusuf Peer is the president of Council of Imams Queensland. Imam Yusuf Peer. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Peace and blessings upon all of you. To place on record, I like to express from the Council of Imams our respect and our appreciation for the elders of this part of the world, the Aboriginal elders, past, present, and future. Distinguished guests and all those that are here. There has never been a greater magnet to attract human beings for the sake of unity, for the sake of understanding,
for the sake of cultural diversity than a place of worship. Today we are proud that the Slax Creek Mosque stands among those places of worship enhancing this understanding of human beings. The quran -e kareem the Sharia of Islam is filled with this message of having great relationship with the humankind. Allah says in the Quran, Wa ahsinu inna allaha yuhibbul muhsineen. Do good, for Allah loves those who do good. And according to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said, Ar-Rahimuna yarhamuhumur rahman. Irhamu man fil ard, yarhamukum man fil sama. The merciful who show mercy, Allah will show mercy to them. So show mercy to those that live on earth, on planet earth, and the heavens, and all that Allah has created in the heavens will show mercy upon you. Respected distinguished guests, friends, neighbors, and all of you, lend me your ears and listen to me. This great place, this mosque, a place of worship is going to churn out the children, the humans, the leadership that is going to be Australia-wise. It's going to be contributing to this country. The children are going to contribute to this country. It's going to be a place where bridges are going to be built with human beings. And today, let me put it very clear. The greatest worship to Allah is to have a good relationship with human beings. It can never exist that you believe in Allah and you show enmity to your humankind. It cannot. That's why the Prophet ﷺ has said that the merciful are those. They are the ones who Allah shows mercy to them. So show mercy of those who live on planet earth and the heavens will show you mercy. We need to understand that we are human beings. We come from diverse culture, diverse backgrounds. But what unites us is the commonalities that are here. In this place, I place on record that the values of Australia will be highlighted. The common values that are there, all that is going to be benefiting to this beautiful country. I don't know, and I like to think, but I like you to reflect what is in the salt of Australia, this vast continent, the greatest island, has so much of nutrition, and it has shown in every tragedy and disaster Australians were number one to be generous to send whatever it is. This is where we come from. This is who we are. This is where it is. It is un-Australian to show enmity to your neighbors, no matter what it is, whether it is color, race, or from whichever background it is. And I applaud all of you, the distinguished guests, the respected and honorable parliament members, and people of different organizations who have come to support the unification of Australia in this wonderful place. Thank you very much for your wonderful speech and advice, Imam Yusuf Peer. The next on our list is our chief guest, Honorable Cameron Dick. Due to some other important commitments, the minister has to leave early so that he can also fulfill other commitments. So I'd like to call him a bit early. He's the Queensland Minister for Health and Minister for Ambulance Services, State MP for Woodridge and member of the Australian Labour Party. Well, thank you very much. And what a special day for our city of Logan as we celebrate the opening of a new place of worship in our city. 
Can I begin by acknowledging uh, the traditional owners of the land where we gather today, uh, the Jagera and Yugambeh speaking people, and pay, pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. Can I thank Auntie Robin uh, for her welcome to country? Uh, we never tire of hearing from Auntie Robin because it is so important for us to recognise the first and traditional owners of Australia when we gather uh, on Aboriginal land. I do want to acknowledge all of the distinguished guests that are here today. It is very important to do so. I want to acknowledge those distinguished guests as a sign of those things that uh, the speakers before me, Dr Hussain, Imam Pia and others, uh, Imam Abuksh, uh, have touched upon. Because today is a day for unity and recognising that our community is coming together to celebrate the opening of a new place of worship. So I do want to acknowledge all of the distinguished guests here. Uh, can I acknowledge uh, Dr Akram Hussain, uh, the chairman of the Slacks Creek uh, Masjid Um Rahman? Can I acknowledge Imam Akram Bush? Can I acknowledge Imam uh, Imran Hussain? Can I acknowledge Imam Yusuf Pia? Can I acknowledge my good friend, Mr Jamal El Khaled, president of the Logan City Mosque? Uh, can I acknowledge all of the other leaders from the Islamic community and from our community of Logan? Can I acknowledge my good friend, Dr Jim Chalmers MP, federal member for Rankin, and now a member of the Shadow Federal Cabinet, uh, responsible for superannuation, financial affairs, and amongst other things, sport. Great to see you here, Jim. Can I acknowledge my parliamentary colleague from the State Parliament, Mr Peter Russo MP, uh, State Member for Sunnybank, and a strong champion for multiculturalism in Queensland. Great to see you here, Peter. From the Logan City Council, can I acknowledge the Deputy Mayor, Councillor Russell Lutton, uh, can I acknowledge our officers, our men and women from the Queensland Police Service here today, including Acting Assistant Commissioner Matthew Vanderbilt, who is representing the Commissioner of Police, Ian Stewart, here today. Great to see our officers from the Queensland Police Service gathered here to show their support for the Unity Centre. Can I acknowledge Mr Wayne Briscoe, the Executive Director of Multicultural Affairs Queensland and officers of Multicultural Affairs Queensland are here. Can I acknowledge candidates for public office, Mr Ken Houliston, and my good friend, Mr. Brett Regroos, uh, John Raven, candidate for Division 5 in the Logan City Council election, and Adam Obey, another good friend of mine who is running for election to the Brisbane City Council for the Council Ward of Holland Park. Uh, Assalamu alaikum to everyone here today. Uh, today is a special day in, in Logan as we celebrate the opening, as I've said, of a new place of worship. Uh, I have to leave shortly to join the Cambodian community. Uh, in uh, Marsden as they celebrate Pracham Benda, which is a very important 15-day period uh, for the Khmer Cambodian community when they reflect upon and celebrate uh, their family. But today uh, adds another, another, another thread. Today adds another thread to that great tapestry of Logan where we celebrate many faiths, many peoples and many communities. And if you come on a short journey with me, very briefly, down one road in the city of Logan and in the state electorate of Woodridge, uh, you can see that tapestry uh, and, and that thread made clear. If you go down Third Avenue, uh, you come across, as you come past Berenbar State School, you come across a Seventh-day Adventist church for the Pacific community, for the Samoan community. You travel further on, you come across a Romanian church. Next door is the Islamic Mosque of Logan. Uh, that Jamal is the president of. You drive on further, you come across a Mormon stake, a church of uh, the Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints. On the other side of the road is St Maximilian Colby, uh, a Catholic church that has just celebrated 30 years in our community. A church unlike, not unlike this place of worship where people literally cut a place in the bush to create a new place of worship and we have just celebrated 30 years uh, of that church. And then you drive on further and you come across uh, a great Cambodian Khmer temple. Just like this place of worship, all of those places of worship have been created by the generosity of volunteers and others who wish to celebrate their faith. And that's been touched on earlier today. The three words before us, Australian, unity, centre, are so critical to how we see our community here in Logan and how we see our state of Queensland and our nation. It is a place where people can come. It is a celebration of freedom. We have a country where people can freely worship or not worship. And 
regardless of your faith or creed, we need to respect each other. We need to turn towards each other and support each other and ensure that everyone is free to worship as they wish in our nation. It is a great Australian value and one that I seek to protect as a Member of Parliament, uh, as do all parliamentarians in Australia. So today is another addition to our community. It is a great celebration and I acknowledge the words of uh, Imran Bush when he talked about the volunteers and those who have contributed so much. Uh, I didn't have the privilege of sharing a room to, to, to snore, um, but I must say that my wife doesn't record my snoring, she just wakes me up and tells me I'm snoring and tells me to stop. But I know the journey you've taken has been a hard one and a difficult one at times, uh, but you see the fruits of your labour here today and it is a wonderful thing to celebrate. Uh, before I go, perhaps I could ask Dr Hussain and Imran Bush to come up. I just have a short presentation to make. I, I was reading some poetry recently and came across this poem and I thought I might present this to the, uh, to the mosque. Uh, for, uh, uh, for use in maybe an office or elsewhere. It's a short poem. It says, It's not the face, the tribe, nor race, nor pigment of the skin. It's not the breed, the class, nor creed, but the heart that beats within. And we have strong hearts in our state, in our city, and our nation. Uh, and uh, I would like to present this as a small token of what it means to celebrate a new place of worship and to celebrate the beating heart of tolerance and understanding in our community. Congratulations on a great achievement. Thank you very much, Dr. Uh, sorry, uh, Honorable Minister Cameron Dick, for your kind words and your advice. Thank you very much once again. Now, next we have Tim Thomas. Tim Thomas is a passionate local advocate for his electorate of Rankin. Born and bred in Logan City, where he lives with his wife, Laura. He is the Shadow Minister for Finance Services and Supernation, Shadow Minister for Sports, Shadow Minister, Assistant Minister for Productivity, Shadow Assistant Minister for Trade and Investments. He has a PhD in Political Science and International Relations from the Australian National University, as well as the First Class Honours Degree in Public Policy from Griffith University. I would like to call upon Jim Chalmers. Thank you. Thank you so much for such a uh, warm uh, welcome. Salaam alaikum. Uh, can I acknowledge uh, Annie Robin and thank her for her uh, welcome earlier on uh, and to pay tribute to the elders and traditions of the Yugambeh people and all of the adjoining language groups in this part of the world. Uh, it's a tremendous honour to be here today. I'm so pleased to see so many people uh, turn out today. There are so many familiar faces here. Uh, from uh, Logan Mosque, from uh, Jamal's Mosque over there at Marsden, from Holland Park, uh, from Kurraby, from the Gold Coast, from further afield. Some of you are familiar to me because of the uh, cricket game that my great friend Graham Perrett and I uh, organised, that Peter Russo did the uh, scoring for last time. We're looking forward to, uh, to having another game. I see a friend here who played in that game. We're looking forward to another game next month and we'll be in touch uh, about that. Uh, my great friend Cameron Dix did, did such a uh, tremendous job, characteristically tremendous job acknowledging everybody here who needs to be acknowledged, but I did want to add uh, to all of the Imams and scholars, uh, to everyone from uh, this mosque and the mosques further afield, uh, anyone who had anything to do with the building of this uh, terrific place, I do congratulate you and salute you and pay tribute to you uh, for what you've managed to achieve today and the way that you've brought our community together. Uh, today. Uh, I didn't want to repeat all of the other acknowledgements, but I did want to say uh, about our friends from the Queensland Police Service. Uh, a lot of you will have the same experience that I've had with the Queensland Police Service, which is the more that I work with them, not just the last two years, but growing up in this community, 
The more I work with them, the more I admire them. Uh, not just for their dedication to uh, this community more broadly, but for their dedication to this community of faith as well. And so I did want to uh, particularly ask you to please put your hands together for all of our friends. Thank you for this and in addition to the politicians amongst us today, who uh, you know well, whether it be Peter Rousseau, Cameron Dick, uh, Russell Lutton, uh, and others, I did want to make sure, in case you don't get the opportunity to meet them personally, uh, that there are people, as Cameron said, who are putting their hands up to represent our city uh, in the council elections in March. And I wanted you to know that they're here today because they want to work with you. Uh, they want to represent this community that we all love. Uh, and I wanted to ensure that they're here, uh, that they've spent time with you today for that purpose. And so I thought I might just ask the four council candidates that we had just to stand up so that I can introduce you properly. Uh, on the end there we have Brett Raguse. Please put your hand up, Brett. So Brett is running for the Mayor of Logan City. Next to him, yeah, please put your hands together for Brett. We have Adam Obey, who's well known to a lot of you who's running to be the councillor for Holland Park. We have John Raven, who's a terrific friend of mine. He's running in Division 5, which is from Marsden and Kingston. If you're from Marsden and Kingston, then John's your man. And we've got Ken Holliston, who's also running for the Mayor of Logan City. I know this is not a political event, but I did want to make sure, uh, in case they can't say hello to you personally, that they are here today to support you. Uh, and in them being here to support us, I think that we should consider supporting them uh, as well. Uh, I only want to make two substantive points for you today. The first one uh, is my great friend who uh, prays at Currabee Mosque, uh, Lucien Caselli. Uh, he gave me a lift from the airport yesterday and we were talking, and as we were talking, he got a text message. Uh, to say that today was on. And we got talking about the event and I mentioned to him that I'd be saying a few words to you. Uh, and the thing that really impressed me about what he told you about today, which some of the other speakers have touched on, uh, is the idea that so many different uh, communities, other mosques, uh, people of means, uh, people from all walks of life have contributed financially <coughs> to make this place possible. Uh, and I know that uh, it is not easy to raise money Often, uh, I, uh, the 11 month roadshow is testament to the kind of effort that needs to go into raising money to make something like this possible. Uh, and what Lucent told me was really important, which was that all the people who put their hands in their pockets uh, to make today a reality, uh, they deserve our applause as well. Will you please put your hands together for everyone who's here? Not, not just money, but effort as well, the volunteers and others, everybody who did, did so much to make today. A reality. That relates to my second point. I'm so pleased that you're calling this place the Australian Unity Centre. That is the absolute perfect name that you could call the Slack Street Mosque, the Australian Unity Centre. Uh, my leader, my boss, uh, the Honourable Bill Shorten, the leader of the Labor opposition in Canberra, he gave a speech during the week in the Australian Parliament where he made a very simple but a very important point and stuck with me in my head ever since, where he said that if we stand together we can't fail, and if we're divided, we can't succeed. And I think the fact that you've called this place the Australian Unity Centre, we all have so much goodwill in the room today, we all want to work together. The remarkable words of each of the speakers before us have shown that we do have that capacity to work together, to be united, even if we have different faiths, if we come from different parts of the world, especially then, we have the capacity to unite and to do great things for our community. And I think that the opening of, of a place called the Australian Unity Centre does invite us to reflect on the type of community we want to be a part of and the type of country that we want to be a part of. I think that's a very important thing to do, to pause to reflect on what we're trying to do. And in my opinion, probably my strongest view that I hold is that the great societies, the great communities, the great nations are the ones that accommodate different viewpoints, the ones that understand each other, the ones that have the capacity to walk in each other's shoes to understand where we're all coming from, to understand that the most important thing to all of us is that we raise our kids in a safe place, a place where education is plentiful, where knowledge is plentiful, where we respect each other, and where we have the capacity to walk, to walk forwards together. So in that context, it makes me really proud to be here today. Uh, really grateful for the opportunity to say a few words, 
Lovely to, to join with my political colleagues, my friends from the police force, all the imams and scholars, all of you from right around the community, the brothers and sisters from all of the mosques. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be here today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your kind words of advice, Jim Chalmers. Now, next is my wonderful neighbor who is um, on Queen Street, Trevor. I hope he's here. He was, wasn't feeling well. Probably he's absent. He has done a very wonderful job for us. I would like to acknowledge him and say thank you very much for the efforts he has made for us. Today, when you came, you, you would still be wandering around and finding that number 16. This gentleman, sitting from his home, he said, I can't see number 16 there. She got up, he went, did his shopping, he wrote nice, beautiful, big number 16, and 4 o'clock in the morning, he got up and he put number 16 on our, in the front there. I would like to thank him, thank him very much, Trevor. And also I'd like to thank our beautiful neighbor from Hope Church, those who have given the parking spaces for us. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to call upon Pastor David Williams. Pastor David Williams is the senior pastor at Gospel Lighthouse Church a Christian Centre Slex Creek. He has been very supportive of this Australian Unity Centre Slex Creek Mosque. On the Anzac Day this year, Pastor David William hosted some of, somewhat like 25 members of our Muslim com community, male and females, for a meal in his, at his church, where we also saw a movie about Anzac Day. Now I would like to call upon Dr. Pastor, Pastor David William. Greetings. Very hard to say to all one and recognise all the deputies that are here now that have been mentioned so many times, and that takes up time. Um, me, I've been a minister for 58 years. It's not too bad for someone who's only 47. <laughs> 58 years, and I never thought I would see the day that I would be standing as a Christian in a mosque. And I say that not offensively, but I say that humbly to each one of you. With my culture and my education through the Christian church, that was unforgivable. But then I studied of the scriptures for myself, and I hold my Bible as the word of God. And I noticed there was a man called Abraham who came from Ur of the Chaldees. He came from Iran. Well, we call him a Muslim, and yet the Christian church honours him and respects him. He had the call of God to go out to the West. And God gave an invitation and a promise to Abraham that Abraham in you and in your seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. That comes from Genesis chapter 15 and verse 14. And in chapter 17, verses 1 to 8, it tells us, God said, Abraham, you shall be the father of many nations. Many nations. <coughs> Not just one. Abraham's first son was called Ishmael. He was from Egypt. He came under the promise, the seed of Abraham. Out of the seed of Abraham, it would multiply. Multiply and would bless many, many nations. Some years later, a few years later, he had another son to his wife, Sarai. And he called his name Isaac. Now Isaac also inherited the promises of God. Ishmael represented the Muslim nation of that day to our thinking. Isaac, he was a Hebrew. And the reason why I say Hebrews, they were firstly Hebrews, 
Then the Israelites, they became Israelites after they came out of Israel. And then they fought and split amongst themselves and they divided into ten tribes and two tribes. The ten tribes remained Israelites and the other two tribes remained Jews to this very day. Those twelve tribes have never, ever, ever been reunited. The promise was to Abraham that your seed would spread abroad to the west, to the east, to the north and to the south. And I believe that was very much, very exact with God when he told them to have spread abroad to such a way. But then what a lot of Christians do not know and seem to understand, at the death of Abraham's wife Sarai, or Sarah as she was now called, Abraham wept and lamented and wept and lamented. And he was broken hearted over the loss of his lifetime partner and wife. And then God gave him strength and Abraham remarried. Abraham remarried at the age of 127 and he lived on for the age of 175. And in that time he married a woman called Keturah and she had six sons to him. Today we know that that represents the Indian nation. Now where do we stand? Us Christians, we look and try to individualise and say, we are right. But no, the promise is to all of us. The promise is whether we are Muslim, whether we are Christian, or whether we are Hindu. It is God said, your seed shall the families of the earth be blessed. About 1,000 500 years later, Jesus Christ came along into the world. This affects the Christian. And it tells us in the book of Romans, from the Bible, chapter 8, chapter 15 and verse 8, that Jesus Christ came to confirm the promises made unto the fathers, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. The promise that God gave unto Ishmael, the promise that God gave unto Isaac also applies today to every person. And out of every person here representing, whether we represent the Christian faith, the Muslim faith, or whatever it may be, we come from that promise of God that God wants to see. Today, these people representing, standing here representing your faith, that you should be a blessing to the nations of the world and we should be blessing Australia and praising and seeing the glory and God's name being glorified in our midst. To many Christians it may surprise them that today throughout the United States of America, England and parts of Europe, rising up, rising up, now there is a new faith which is called Chrislam. Chrislam. Now the thing I would say about that is when you get home, look up on your website and look up Chrislam and find out all about it. That it is moving throughout, throughout United States of America, England and Europe. Maybe the next step is on Australia where we can see Chrislam. We are here because we have a singleness of heart and a love to serve. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Pastor David Williams, for your kind words. Thank you very much once again. Next is Mr. David Ford. David Ford is a longtime community friend and supporter. He has been known in many roles. He has been a strong public advocate for the Muslim community, both on professional and private capacity for t nearly 20 years. In 2013, David received the Islamic Council of Queensland Non-Muslim Award in recognition of his work. Mr. David Ford. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. 
I'd like to uh, acknowledge the traditional owners. Um, I won't go through the uh, VIP list, but obviously the imams, the elected representatives, but everybody is equal, uh, one and all. When I said to my wife I was coming here, she said, well, you haven't been out of the house since you got out of hospital the week before last, and the first thing you're doing is coming to uh, a mosque opening. And I said, well, in fairness, that's in support of the work that Iman Akram has been doing in the community, and I think that people that actually do good, good in the community need to be supported. Because I know that this mosque is not just um, a place of worship, uh, obviously that's its primary focus, but it's also a centre, particularly working with the youth. Um, and with that, I want to acknowledge Robbie and Jane for the work that they are already doing with the youth. And If it wasn't for this mosque, well, a lot of that work wouldn't happen. Um, when I asked somebody in the community, what should I talk about, because I don't want to be repeating what everybody else says, um, they said, talk a little bit about your own experiences. So I'm just going to talk briefly on, on two points. Um, one is about the challenges I receive, and just with mosques more generally, and also social media. Um, I've been challenged, it's fair to say, by individuals, whether it's on social media or, or verbally, uh, you know, why do we want another mosque? We don't want a mosque because they breathe, you know, extremism, they preach extremism. And I say to the people who say it, you know, civil conversation, I'll say, well, you know, have you actually been to a mosque to hear what they say? And usually I get, no, we wouldn't be welcome. And I said, well, you can actually go and listen, and a lot of the stuff is actually recorded. I said, in fact, it's quite the opposite. I've been to a lot of mosques. I've been on a Friday. Um, I said, the message is actually very positive. And I said, if there was no mosques and you had your wish and you got rid of mosques and um, allowing that nobody in the community is going anywhere I said you know where would people pray and generally your responses have been you know we don't care I remember particularly one person you know we don't care I said that's okay okay so they'll go to the back room of a the house there's nothing wrong with praying there but they'll go to the back room of a house or perhaps they'll go on to the internet and get Sheikh Google from Iraq or Sheikh Google from Syria I said because they don't actually need the congregation over there I said, you know, they can actually, um, if you like, in inverted commas, educate um, people from here. So, uh, you know, you ask yourself, I said to people, what do you think is the better outcome from everybody, including the community? Because the imams have got the knowledge, and I can assure you, they're as Australian as anybody else. And very rarely have I then had a dissenting view on that, except for someone who's an out and out bigot, and you're not going to change their mind. And, you know, perhaps that just underlines some of the work that still needs to be, well, not still, that has to be ongoing in the community in terms of breaking down barriers. And the other one is social media. Um, I don't want to, I'm gonna start off with a little bit of a negative, but I wanna try and show the positive side. There's no doubt a lot of people in the community have suffered as a consequence of some of the social media that has gone on. Um, some of it has been pretty horrendous, um, including people attached to this mosque, and I know there's people who've actually shut down Facebook sites in the community because of what's been said. But I want to stand by a view that I've had, and other people have. It is a very, very loud minority. The reason they are so loud, perhaps, is because they're accommodated or supported by sections of the media, and also, I have to say, politically. And with that, I will acknowledge those politicians and candidates that have actually come today in support. I think that's very important. But I think people need to realize that it is, it is a minority, it's just that they're very loud. And on the flip side of that, to the positive, I've been quite open in my support for the community, including for this mosque. I will put up posts. I, a, a classic example was at Dara Mosque about six weeks ago on a Friday um, before the prayer. And I said, I'll put it up and I'll say what I was doing. And I don't get a single negative, well, no, that's an exaggeration. I get some negative comments and generally in private. But 99% of the responses I get to that are positive, including mainly from non-Muslims, including people from the Christian Jewish faith and people from the old faith. And it underlines to me and it also encourages me that the minority out there are only, they're allowed because they're allowed to be allowed, that people need to stand up and people need to show support as a united community. I know this mosque is already doing a lot of work. I've already seen what the mosque has done in terms of the local community, supporting local families, door knocking, inviting people in, including we've heard from the pastor and there's other people here today, perhaps who I didn't think would support the mosque. And so I just want to acknowledge the work that you're already doing. Um, I think it's very important. But because of that work, it probably underlines 
the actual need and the importance of the mosque in Logan to provide a facility for those of the Islamic faith. Thank you. Thank you very much for your advice, David Ford. Thank you very much once again. Next is Haji Bashar Al Jamal, a special guest. He is the director of Human Appeal International Australia. I would like to call upon Haji Bashar Al Jamal. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon every one of you. Good morning to everyone. Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, Hussein and Imam Akram, for inviting me to this beautiful uh, occasion. I came the whole way from Sydney this morning. Alhamdulillah, it's a beautiful project. I believe strongly that this project will contribute highly to Brisbane by producing, inshallah ta'ala, quality, good citizen. Uh, Alhamdulillah, Human Appeal Australia got يعني, a pleasure to be part and assisting our brothers uh, to uh, build this mosque. Uh, inshallah ta'ala, officially, uh, Human Appeal will establish uh, Human Appeal Queensland uh, in the coming two months and beginning ta'ala the peace uh, of uh, Human Appeal Queensland will be from this beautiful uh, place inshallah ta'ala Human Appeal uh, assisted the community for the last 25 years and inshallah ta'ala we will continue to do that Jazakumullah khair once again for the invitation and we wish for you the best inshallah ta'ala uh, in the close future. Thank you. Thank you very much Hadi Bashar al-Jamal. Representing our Maya Pempaka, we have our Deputy Maya Councillor Russell Luton. Councillor Russell Luton is one of the city's longest serving councillor after being elected in 1985. Currently, he is the Deputy Mayor of Logan, Councillor Lawton has served on every standing council committee, including six years as chairperson of Town, Pl Town Planning and Environment Committee and four years as chair of the Development and Environment Committee. He has the diversity of those who live in L Logan and the way community comes together in times of adversity are the city's best attributes. He became a counselor to, to help people in the community and to make a difference. I'd like to call upon Deputy Mayor Russell Luton. Good morning. Well, good afternoon. Yeah, still good morning. And uh, thank you for allowing me. I feel so privileged to be a speaker at such a, an occasion. At the outset, I'd like to acknowledge uh, the traditional owners of the land on which we meet um, and thank Auntie Robin, who I think has gone for her wonderful uh, welcome. Acknowledge leaders of all cultures, past, present and future. All the dignitaries have been acknowledged. I'm not going to go over them again. I think we know everyone that's here. But I would like to... Um, acknowledge the presence of the police and um, uh, Acting Assistant Commissioner Matthew Vanderbilt and please, uh, Matthew, can you convey our thanks back to the Commissioner for providing us with Saad, our very first Muslim police liaison officer. I look forward to working very closely so we have a wonderful relationship between Logan City Council and our police and we have been working so hard to get someone on my side here. Thank you very much. With the exception of the Aboriginal, now I'm going to stick to my notes because I'm not as polished to speak as the previous one, so I've got a written speech. With the exception of the Aboriginal people who have long called this region home, the people of Logan are migrants or descended from migrants who have arrived and settled here in increasing numbers over the past 180 years. 
And when the, those children were out here before singing Advance Australia Fair, that reminded me the lines that went. For those who've come across the sea, we've boundless claims to share. And that truly is the spirit of Australia. Our community is one of the most diverse in Australia, welcome, welcoming people from more than 200 nationalities from every corner of the globe. We are a community and a city that prides itself on its diversity and our acceptance of people from different races, cultures and religions. And in fact, I was sitting there before thinking of the, uh, as you know, Cameron Dick was talking about the, the churches that are in uh, Third Avenue. We've been stone throw here, well, right here, there's obviously a Christian church. Down the road, there's a Hindu church. Tonight, I'm attending a Buddhist temple. And that's the sort of um, community that we have here in Logan. The opportunity to worship no matter what your religion. We also pride ourselves on our willingness to welcome migrants, refugees, and people from across Australia who wish to make a better life for themselves and their family here. For all of our aspirations for a better life, people in Logan have often been unfairly stereotyped because of our so socio-economic, racial and cultural differences, because of our diversity. For the people of Logan, stereotypes are something we take in our stride. We know that they are a simplification for people who don't look beyond what is presented to them. We know they don't reflect us as individuals or a community. We do, however, take strength in our diversity, and that strength is represented in many ways. Through the foods we eat, the sports we play, the languages we speak, and the friends we make, it is also represented in our beliefs and our places of worship. At one time, Catholic, Lutheran, Anglican, Methodist, and Baptist churches were the only places of worship to be found in Logan. Now we have mosques, temples, a wide variety of Christian churches. That's what a community should be, where there is a place and a freedom for all faiths to exist peacefully, side by side. You may or may not be aware that I'm a member of the Logan City, City of Choice leadership team. As part of this innovative cross-government and community partnership, we've created a community cohesion working group, which I chair. Our aim is to encourage a spirit of inclusion that makes it impossible for racism, bigotry and fear-mongering to take root. We've done this by looking at ways to make our city more welcoming to people from all walks of life and faith, by acknowledging and celebrating our diversity. On behalf of Council and the people of Logan, I welcome your contribution to the fabric of our community. Religious freedom is an important part of life in Australia, as is open dialogue and interfaith cooperation and understanding. A safe and secure community is one in which all members are valued and respected. We strive for that here in Logan City, and we all have a part to play in making it a reality every day regardless of where we come from or our chosen faith. As a council, we represent a large and diverse community that often involves conflicting perspectives and our role is always to listen, respond rationally and stand up for what's right. There can be elements in any group of people and any faith that misrepresent the wider community. These people may have the loudest voices some days though they're through their words and through actions but they don't represent the rest of us. I encourage you to continue your journey in becoming a connected part of the wider Logan community, just as we at Council and the City of Choice leadership team are encouraging all parts of our community to connect with each other through mutual respect and understanding. On behalf of the many races, cultures, beliefs and people of Logan, I welcome people of the Islamic faith and the opening of this mosque as a symbol of that faith. I have been inspired by, why, by what I've heard this morning from the speakers. It truly has um, been a wonderful morning of inspiration for me to hear our uh, Imam speak. I look forward to working with you, as I do with all other community and faith groups, in making Logan the safe and welcoming city we know we can be. Congratulations on the official opening of the Australian Unity Centre. Thank you.
Thank you very much, uh, our Deputy Mayor Russell Luton. Thank you very much once again. Next on the list is our Honorable Shannon Fentiman, Minister for Communities, Women and Youth, Minister for Child Safety, and Minister for Multicultural Affairs. Shannon is committed to social justice and throughout her career has worked to improve the lives of working, of working people. She is passionate about fighting discrimination and unfairness at work and in the community. Due to some other commitments, the minister is unable to come and to represent Honorable Shannon Fentiman, we have Peter Russell, MP for Sunnybank. Now I would like to call upon Peter Russell. I would like to respectfully acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today and elders past, present and emerging and to thank Annie Robin for her welcome to country. I would like to acknowledge respected Inman, my state and federal colleagues and representatives from Logan City and also the candidates that are here today that are running in the next council election. I would also like to acknowledge and thank the Queensland Police Service members that are here today for their hard work and dedication in our community. Community representatives and members, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Good morning, everybody. It is an honour to be here at the opening of this mosque, or to give it its official title, the Australian Unity Centre Flax Creek Mosque. Today I am representing the Minister for Multicultural Affairs, the Honourable Shannon Fenderman, MP. Minister Fenderman asked me to pass on her apologies and best wishes for this event. I am also here as a friend of the Muslim community. My comments will be brief on account of the numerous speakers we've already had. The Queensland Government is aware of the challenges that you as a community have faced in reaching this point of finally seeing the opening of your mosque. I want to congratulate you as a community and through the leadership of the mosque committee in how you have conducted yourselves at times when you were subjected to significant challenges. As a government, and certainly through the Minister Fintman, we are committed to inclusive and cohesive communities where everybody is treated fairly and has equal opportunities regardless of race and religion. That is why the Queensland Government is introducing the multicultural legislation to establish a multicultural Queensland Charter and multicultural Queensland Advisory Council. The legislation will not just be principle based, it will also commit all future Queensland governments to give due respect to our multicultural society through a multicultural policy and action plan. The Multicultural Queensland Advisory Council will play a significant role in ensuring that government policies support the needs, aspirations, contributions of people from diverse communities. As some of you will be aware, Minister Finneman has visited several mosques and held meetings with representatives from across the Muslim community that have included some of you here this morning and not the least Imran Akhman. On the 20th of November 2015, Minister Fenneman is hosting another meeting with community representatives. This underlines the Minister's understanding and commitment to listening to and working in partnership with the community to address issues and concerns. As a Member of Parliament, I certainly look forward to extending and enhancing my relationship with Queenslanders of Islamic faith. I trust that this new mosque proves to be a valuable asset for the community, not just for Muslims, not just for the Muslim community, but in a way that also reaches out to non-Muslims and forging greater understanding 
in breaking down barriers. Once again, congratulations on this achievement. Thank you, thank you. Peter Russell. I would like to acknowledge, also acknowledge from Federal Police here, Shane Johnston, for coming. Thank you very much. There's a gentleman I would like to introduce, call upon, and he's a very important member of our community. He's elderly, and we have given him two minutes, maybe one and a half minute, because when he starts talking, he doesn't stop. And we'd like to, I'd like to say something about him. Why we called him, we are giving him a chance to talk, because in 2009, this gentleman got lost for 14 hours, and we are lucky to have him here. He got lost in about around 2 million people, and after 14 hours we found him when he went for Hajj to Mecca with us. In 2000. Now I'd like to call upon Haji Safat Evdit. Haji Safat Evdit. <laughs> he deserve something better than that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Salam alaikum to all, big and small. I'm very happy to give the chance. Go to. I'm very happy to give the chance to talk to you even half a minute. He, he restricted me. Believe me, there's three people. If you not exist. The mosque would be this. The three people that they come here in this community, the three people never built, uh, never built the mosque, never, never have a chance to sit in here and enjoy there. Uh, three people is the first of all, Imam uh, Akram, his father, Farouk, and one of the men, Nodi boy, is here. <laughs> he done so much tremendously, so many times, so many flying, so many talking, so many, uh, 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 many uh, die not sleeping, so many hungry, any, many, many other things I don't want to mention with anymore. Now, uh, I really, I'm got a privilege to uh, uh, say to you all people here, I give you salam to one very important person for Muslim Bosnian community, Imam Jogic Osman, he coming from Europe, from Bosnia to memorizing, he died and give it to the salam to Bosnian people for his uh, knowledge of the opening beautiful nice mosque. I'm very happy. I don't want more to talk to you because half a minute is gone. But uh, next time I will talk to you much longer. Salam alaikum. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Haji Safat. Just before I go on to the next speaker, I have a sister who also wants to get a couple of minutes to say something. She's from Islamic Women Association of Queensland, Sister Jalila Abdel Salem. Can I call upon Sister Jamila? Jalila. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Um, congratulations for the opening of uh, our beautiful mosque. I just want to congratulate ourselves and you for that opening, and thank you very much for those who come today, it's really a great opportunity for me to say something representing Muslim women. Um, um, we would like to have uh, the mosque available for Muslim women as well as men. Um, I've been around all the mosques in Queensland, um, in Brisbane in particular. Uh, unfortunately, mm, some of the mosque is suitable for people with disability, some not. I hope that to be taken in consideration 
uh, that disability, uh, people with disability, women, to have their own space, as well children. So when I see children here, I'm really glad because we want to introduce the young people to the mosque. Thank you very much. Again, representing the Islamic Common Association, and congratulate you all for the program. Thank you, Sister Jamila. Now, representing Queensland Police Commissioner Ian Stewart, I have Acting Assistant Commissioner Matthew Vendaba. Can I call upon? Thank you very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Can I open by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we, on which we meet today, uh, elders, past and present and emerging. And can I thank Honey Robin, uh, who I believe has left, but can I thank her for a very kind and warm words, um, uh, direct towards the police service, and also some of the other speakers who have been um, very, very generous in your comments about the police service. I join um, all prior speakers in acknowledging all distinguished guests that are here today, uh, particularly the distinguished imams, um, and, uh, and the members of all the mosque communities. Um, I think uh, uh, Minister, uh, Minister Dick uh, sort of caught it quite well with the list that he expanded on in terms of the distinguished guests. But what a delightful problem to have, to have such a lengthy list of acknowledgements. And doesn't that just go for um, supporting what the name is about, the Australian Unity Centre? Uh, that, that really, really just says it all. And in this, uh, in this room today, uh, I see unity personified. I see an enormous, disparate group of people drawn from all sorts of communities, um, all coming together for the one purpose. And that purpose is peace, and that purpose is tolerance. And, and a whole range of other purposes that are all equally noble. And I, I think that's extraordinary. I think that's extraordinary. Um, can I also open um, by passing on the most sincere apologies from Commissioner Stewart. Um, he has personally asked me to extend his apologies. Uh, regrettably, uh, he has to be in Sydney this morning for the funeral of Curtis Chang. Um, and you all understand the, the necessity for the Commissioner of Police Service to be at that event. So I am very pleased to represent him but also humble to represent him. Um, I join with my colleagues who are here today. I'm, I'm joined by the Acting District Officer of, of this district, the local district, Glen Allen, uh, the officer in charge of the local police station, Acting Senior Sergeant Simon Mortimer. I'm joined by PLOs, I'd say. Uh, and can I also um, just give you the good news that we expect to have another Muslim PLO um, working in Logan by Christmas. Um, We weren't really committed to the PLO program, and we love our PLOs. They just do an outstanding job for us. Um, and uh, we, we really are looking forward um, to that, to being able to make a final announcement about that very soon, that the selected candidate is just currently finalising the selection process. And I think that's a, a really good piece of news for us to be talking about today. Um, I believe uh, that the spirit of faith and understanding resides in all of us. Uh, and the police service particularly stand very strongly with you on this. And I talk about tolerance and, and there are the, the imams just so eloquently captured in a, those three powerful speeches that we had this morning. Three very, very powerful speeches. They very eloquently captured um, what it means to be tolerant, but also the rejection of intolerance. You know, a number of week, eight weeks ago, we, we met, as we do quite regularly, with, uh, with leaders from Muslim and other communities, but there was a growing concern about um, a proposed day of action and a day of protest. I think David Ford alluded to this with social media, and there are some who will go on social media and say terrible things, will promote terrible division, will promote hatred, and will promote intolerance. And we as a police service um, stood committed to working very strongly with the Muslim community um, to reject that, to overcome that. There were three protest sites that were set out for that Saturday. And we stood ready. We marshaled our forces. We got people together. I think in King George Square, we might have got nine protesters. Nine. OK? So uh, I, think, I think that is a really, really good thing for our community. That just says a lot about the community, that says a lot about community executives 
from community values. Uh, so we, we were enormously hardened by that. And it also says to me that those who have spread racial intolerance and division on social media are, hide, are hiding behind the thickest curtain of cowardice that you could probably imagine. And I can give you a commitment from all of my colleagues here in the room today and from Commissioner Stewart and from the Senior Executive that we will continue to work side by side with you for as long as it takes to stamp out that sort of racial intolerance and division. Okay, thank you for There is no place for prejudice in the Australia that those lovely children sang about earlier on today. And as I said, we stand beside you with that. So, I, I, I'm, again, I express uh, the apologies from Commissioner Stewart. I congratulate you warmly um, and heartily on this centre. In talking to Dr Hussain before the events of today, um, I am just overwhelmingly impressed with the work that is going on that is unsung and is, and is unpublished in this community of Logan uh, by the members of this centre um, to help those who are less fortunate than ourselves. Um, I, I acknowledge that. That is just a marvellous, marvellous thing to help the marginalised and the impoverished and to, to sort of grow that community hip cohesion that the Deputy Mayor talked so, so strongly about. I love the tapestry analogy that Minister Dick talked about. Um, it's those communities that are the, the good communities to live in. You know, and my wife and I are striving to bring our little boy who starts school next year. He will go to school in the most multicultural school that I can pick in the community in which I live for that same reason. You know? And I was uh, talking to my, my little four and a half year old this morning and telling him where I was coming this morning. I must have been going on and on and on about it. Because my wife looked me in the eye and she said, you really love it, don't you? And I said, I do. I do. Because we're committed to it and we're just so proud of it. Uh, of being invited here today. And we're so proud to be able to stand with you today on this very, very great day. So on behalf of Commissioner Stewart and the entire Queensland Police Service, congratulations everyone. This is a tremendous achievement. Thank you. Thank you very much, Thank you very much uh, Assistant Commissioner Matthew Vanderbilt. Now we have almost come to a conclusion. Next on the list is a very important member, very important man for us. And this gentleman, no words can explain, we can't thank him enough. He is Haji Hassan Goss, the president of Gold Coast Moss, he is one of the best auctioneer in Queensland. Haji Hassan Goss, Goss's family also runs a cold storage trucking company called Goss Brothers. And he is one of the men who work tirelessly and travel with us from state to state, helping us in collecting the funds for the purchase of this property. <laughs> he was also a voice during the campaign, as Dr. Akram has confirmed. He allowed us to do two Friday congregational, congregational prayer collections at his mosque, Gold Coast Mosque, where we, in total of within two and a half hours, we collected $120,000. He also is a very generous man. We are looking for, forward for help from him in the near future. Now I would like to call upon Aji Hassan Goss. Give me the microphone. Come on, get out of there. <laughs> Firstly, I'd um, like to uh, acknowledge the um, traditional owners, of course. I'd like to acknowledge uh, all the special guests here today. And of course, our respected imams. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. And good morning to one and all. Bear with me, I, I think I lost my voice last night. I was in Sydney doing a fundraiser and we raised a million dollars in one night. And yes, and yes, it was for a mosque. It was for a mosque. And why not? As the Deputy Mayor said, there's so many churches and places I worship around here and there's a mosque here now too. So now, 
we're in the Bible Belt with one and all. And we're all doing our part. And we're worshipping one God. Imam Akram came to me probably 11 months ago, 12 months ago, and he said to us, he said, we need to do a job. I said, what's the job? He said, we're going to buy a centre in State Creek. I said, there's no Muslims up here. Forget about those buggers. I said, we've we'll got enough places around. And he said, no, I'm fair income. I said, all right. I said, what have we got to do? He said, only one thing we need. We need money. Uh, I said, you won't get it from me. <laughs> so, look. So we went on a tour. We went on a tour around Australia. We knocked on doors and the people came and gave. The people are kind when you ask them in the right way. And when you see the finished product here today, and we know as a Muslim that our donations do not go unseen. We know that our Lord, our God, has put this in our book of, our book of accounts when we leave this world. Everybody needs some good deeds to take from this world to the hereafter. And by contributing towards a mosque, a prayer centre like this, you will get your just reward. The people that never gave, we feel sorry for them. Because these opportunities do not come along every day. We thank Imam Akram and his team, Brother Shaveen, they're a pain in the backside sometimes, but we got the job done. We got the job done, alhamdulillah. Only by the blessing of Allah we got this job done. Because without belief and without faith and without honesty, these sort of things can't happen. We have to understand that we are a multicultural country. And we should acknowledge, yes, the community and the mayor of Logan for allowing this to happen to. And we should acknowledge uh, the mayor of Bendigo. He stood his ground too. And we hope that we'll all go to the opening there when it's built. And why not? We're not opening a pub. We're not opening a casino. We're opening where people come and worship their God. And what's wrong with that? Yes, from time to time, we have, yes, even in our community, some people get a little mixed up. But I can tell you something now. With the quality of imams in the state that are doing their part, not just for the Muslim community, but for the wider community, we're in good hands. We're in good hands. And of course, we need to work together. Federal, state, local, of course. It's one of those things that if we're not united, it's irrespective of colour, creed or religion, if we're not united, we will not go nowhere. But if we are united, then God willing, we can move a mountain. So I'm not going to say much more than this, but all I want to say is congratulations to the team here at Safe Spread. Congratulations to all the people that gave a donation. Congratulations to people no, no congratulations. The people that knocked him and said, no, nah, can't happen. Can't do it. $2.2 billion is not going to happen. Well, it did happen, as I said earlier, only by the will of Allah. Congratulations, Imam Makram and your team. And I know this will be a beacon of light for Logan. Inshallah. Thank you very much. Haji Hassan Goss. We want to see you all at the Gold Coast tomorrow, 9 o'clock. We have an international food festival, many delicacies. It's open for one and all, Muslim and non-Muslim. Please come along at the Gold Coast Mosque. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your patience. Now we have reached to the end of this program. As we promised, 12 o'clock from 10 to 12. We are just 
almost two minutes behind 12 now. So we are almost there. Now I would like to call upon Imam Yusuf Peer to conclude with the dua. Just for the benefit of those, as you know, that we have not performed the prayer, and the dua is one form of prayer which is supplication. So I have the honor and privilege to lead you in prayer. Please join me. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa Nabiina Mughlana Muhammadin wa Barik wa Sallim. O Allah, O Almighty God, with the beautiful names and beautiful qualities, we take these beautiful names and beautiful qualities of yours. O Almighty Allah, we cannot praise you as you praise yourself. O Allah, to you belongs all praise. You are the creator of heaven and earth and whatever it is. O oh Allah, all praise belongs to you. You are the established establisher and establishes everything that between the heaven and earth. Ya Allah, we are Kareem. Ya Allah, we are here in this beautiful place of yours where you're going to be worshipped, where you're going to be praised. And as from the teachings of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Allah, we all aware that this place was a church. Today is a mosque. Ya Allah, we are committed. Ya Allah, we are committed to praise Isa, to revere Jesus in this place as well. So our fellow Christian men, Ya Allah, Ya Kareem, do not think that something has been snatched away. A place where they cherish to praise Jesus. Ya Allah, we are committed to revere him as we have been taught by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to revere all prophets. Ya Allah, open our hearts in this wonderful country that you have given. So vast, so diverse, so filled with your bounties. Ya Allah, expand our chest. Open our hearts for every individual Australian to be in our hearts. To cherish every humankind, every animal, every plant that you create. For that is the way and the pathway and the roadmap to be thankful to you. Ya Allah, grant Dr. Hussein, Dr. Akram, Brother Shamim, the board, the team members, the volunteers, the well-wishers, the donators, everyone, small and big, even from a penny to a shilling. Ya Allah, give them prosperity in this world. Give them good health. And Ya Allah, all the distinguished guests that have come to cherish and to well-wish this place, the people from different departments of the government, the Queensland Police, Ya Allah, grant them prosperity, grant them good health, grant them happiness, and Ya Allah, make us all united. The name goes very well in your name, Australian Unity Centre. O oh Allah, open our hearts, grant us the skill to create unity. Grant us to have the skill to enhance faith, for faith eradicates and obliques hate. Ya Allah, Ya Kareem, you are the greatest. You are the creator. And Ya Allah, everything is easy. Nothing is difficult for you. Ya Allah, Ya Kareem, grant our students and the children to be Australia wise and to be leaders of this community. We all want to contribute to one another. Grant us love, understanding. Ya Akramul Akrameen. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين. جزاك الله خير، إمام يوسف بير. Just forgot to make one announcement. Tonight at the Islamic College of Brisbane, there is a fundraiser for Mojima Arrahma for disabled and sick. Tickets would be sold outside. So those brothers and sisters who are interested in doing, helping this in this good cause, please, you will find tickets outside.
please do not dis miss this opportunity. Thank you very much. Yes, now we're going to have lunch. Uh, ladies, all arrangements have been made at the back. And the, and the gentlemen on this side, on the left, you can go through this door or come from, like, and from around there, that way. And all the dignitaries, and the, the, we can go on this way. So, thank you very much. Thanks for your patience. Thank you very much. Enjoy. And have a good day.